Hey guys, it is Saturday, June the 10th, 2023, and because I've been putting a lot of work into understanding uh, what drives price and what drives these markets, I wanted to uh, come out there and make a video on uh, what I've called myth busting or changing your lingo. So I've I wrote out some notes uh, and I've also overlaid it with uh, with a with a price chart here, um, and I'm just doing that so so that I can I can try and and stay on script. Um, so in order to improve your understanding of what price is doing in the futures market, I've created some myths here that are pretty common throughout the industry that are simply not true, and uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go through it. So, in order to see how the market for how it truly works, you will need to change the vocabulary that you use to describe the market. So, the way in which you self-talk or that you talk to yourself about what price is doing, that narrative, the manner in which you you are using your language as a framework, needs to become algorithmic in order to be more accurate for your own self-understanding. So. When you see that price is making a certain move or price is repricing somewhere, right? The market is repricing somewhere, it's rebalancing, it's delivering and it's re-delivering an inefficiency. That's that's the manner in which you need to think. In order to, to act, in order to understand what the algorithm is doing, you need to think in algorithmic terms. So myth number one, there is supply and demand. The truth is, is that there is no supply and demand, not in the way in which you think. The algorithm is merely re-delivering an inefficiency, rebalancing an inefficiency, expanding volatility, meaning it's expanding into an area of liquidity or it's expanding its gamma. It's expanding volatility, it's contracting volatility or it's contracting gamma. Um, it's, it's creating an imbalance or it's rebalancing an old imbalance. That's what it's doing. So when you see a, a, a quick, fast up move, it's an expansion in gamma, or it's um, it's expanding in order to expand into liquidity and per potentially uh, do some other things as well. It's going to be as it's expanding gamma or it's expanding volatility, it's re-delivering old inefficiencies, it's rebalancing old inefficiency, it's creating a fair price. So. There is no supply and demand. It just doesn't exist. Uh, not in this market, because the market is controlled by an algorithm. It's controlled by potentially one big pricing engine, or it's controlled by, by multiple al algorithms, multiple high-frequency trading algorithms working in synchrony as kind of a gestalt algorithm. In any event, we're just going to call it the algorithm. These are all ICT concepts, by the way, so I just want to make sure that I'm giving credit where it's due. Um, so there are there is no supply and demand. There's no supply zones. There's no demand zones. Sometimes those concepts, by happenstance, might work for you, but it's not really what's going on. So let's take a look at our daily example here on the S and P 500 September contract, and let's look at some of our extreme price points. So we go back to in May, and We will highlight this out on the daily chart. So most of your retail traders, and that includes a lot of people that have a lot of money, you can still have a lot of money, be wealthy, and not understand how the market pricing is working. Um, you could work for a fund. You could be, uh, you could be some sort of a large trading fund and still not understand what the market is doing. So when we see these two price runs that came down to about 4100, so we have swing one, we have swing two. 
What it's doing and what Price was doing in both of these instances was it was doing a few things. So number one, it was expanding gamma to the downside, as in we had a contraction in volatility and then an expansion in volatility, which is what we expect to happen. We expect an expansion in volatility and then a contraction in volatility on any time frame. But number two, what Price was doing was, first off, it was coming in and it was coming into a liquidity zone below numerous lows, so it's picking up market orders in order to offer price at a Citadel, actually, you know, Citadel talks about, about it on its website. We price the market where there are willing buyers and there are willing sellers. And that's what it says on Citadel's website. And they're actually kind of hinting to you what's really going on. Um, anyways, go on Citadel's website. You'll see what I'm talking about. We give market participants the opportunity to trade the products they want at the prices they want. Little do you know that what Citadel is actually saying is that your stop orders and your market orders, your willing participant there, even if it's a loss for your account, you're, that's a willing order, right? So anyways, we're coming in and we're filling in and we're re-delivering. I shouldn't say even filling in. If I want to be accurate, we are re-delivering the first time. A re-delivery is that first pass. So we re-deliver this inefficiency on the left. We then expand gamma again, or we expand volatility again. We contract for a day, and then we expand gamma again. We come back to the same exact inefficiency that we had prior, around 4,100, and now we re-deliver it again, and now that we ended up coming and fully uh, pricing to that same high that we had for March 23rd, and then trading out of it, we rebalance. So what happened here? To, to think in more accurate terms, or, or what in algorithmic terms, we have a contraction in volatility in, in the week of 19th April of 2023. And so we have a contraction in gamma. We then expand gamma down in order to re-deliver an inefficiency around 41, around 4100. We re-deliver partially. We partially re-deliver into an inefficiency that was present there from March 30th. We expand gamma again in order to uh, in order to pick up market orders or to pick up opposite side liquidity. And then we have a small contraction in gamma or volatility around, uh, what is this, May 1st. We then expand gamma again. We're coming back and we are re-delivering that same inefficiency that we formed on March 30th. We are then rebalancing the inefficiency as we exit. And after these two contractions in gamma, we have about a week of, uh, sorry, expansions in gamma. We contract gamma for about a, a week or so, about six days. So we have a contraction uh, in gamma or a consolidation profile, basically, to think in more human terms. We expand up again into, into an area of liquidity. We then re-deliver back down into that same area where there was an efficient price. So if we ever talk about thinking in terms of uh, thinking in algorithmic terms, right? Like a computer programmer, basically. We're trying to think like, uh, think of the market in computer program terms or symbolic logic terms. This area that I'm highlighting in the box, this is what an efficient market looks like. It's basically, it kind of looks like a barcode, but it's a contraction in gamma and it's a up and down and up and down and up and down. And what price is doing there is it's basically telling you at that time, we think that about 4185, 4183, given all of the algorithms factors, this is a fair price for now. Okay? We expand gamma up away from a fair price, and then what does the algorithm want to do? It wants to take us right back down to that fair price. Get back into that fair price and see, okay, is there, you know, it wants to come back and test this balanced range or this efficient market price. It comes back, tests it. Okay, then we expand gamma again. We come back. We're in, we deliver into an area of liquidity. We then contract and we retrace. Okay, I shouldn't even say retrace because retrace is, is also sort of a retail term. What we're doing is price is re delivering this inefficiency that we had here. Okay, it re delivers it and then it trades away from it, fully filling in the gap or fully filling in the inefficiency. So it re delivers and then rebalances. And then as we come up on our June contract expiration, which is uh, on the 19th of June, we're, we're feeling the strong effects of theta decay. 
What is theta decay? Well, theta decay is basically whenever you have, it's time decay. And so whenever you have an options contract or a futures contract that is a derivative of the underlying product, when you have a contract rollover coming and the next contract is coming in that's going to have a high theta, right? Theta decay moves on an exponential curve. So what does that mean? As you get closer and closer to the contract expiration, the price is going to rapidly, the market, or S&P 500 futures, the ES, is going to rapidly reprice itself into a fair price based on the September contract. That is theta decay, and it's an options principle, but the same thing applies to any time-based time -based sort of uh, market where you're, you time is a factor. And so, again, that's part of the reason why time is so important is, is on this level, we're also looking at theta decay. So as we come into this next week, and it's our last week for the June contract trading, we're expecting a, a high amount of theta decay in order to get us in line with this contract, this, the, uh, the September contract. So that was the first myth, that there is supply and demand. There is no supply and demand. Um, there's only redeliveries, reprices, expansions, contractions, imbalances, and rebalances. So we have a redelivery of an inefficiency, a reprice of price, an expansion in gamma, a contraction in gamma, a creation of an imbalance, or a, a reprice, a redelivery, or a rebalance of, of an inefficiency. That's all that's happening in the market, similar to how it would work in options. Okay. So anything, as I wrote out on my notes here, moves, moves are not even really moves. <laughs> not in the human terms in which you think. Uh, price is expanding gamma in order to redeliver or rebalance an old inefficiency or to enter into an area of liquidity. It will then contract gamma in order to expand again. And you, at the same time, because you're dealing with a time-based product, like a futures product, you know that you are dealing with uh, theta decay. So as, price, as one contract expires coming into the next contract, as the, first, as the front month, or right now it would be June, as it expires, that theta decay is going to increase exponentially in order to get us, get us basically uh, into line or into harmony with the next contract. Or should, I should say, yeah, synchronize. Synchronize with the next contract, I think, would be a good, a good way to put it in, in English. So th there are no zones. There is no supply and demand. There's only inefficiencies, redeliveries, reprices, expansions, contractions, rebalances, etc. There is no supply and demand. There's no such thing. Myth number two, there are buyers and there are sellers. There are no buyers and there are no sellers. The market does not go up and it does not go down because of buyers and sellers. And if that were true, then how would gaps happen? <laughs> right? Because there's how do, how do weekend gaps happen if, if it were really ever working off of buyers and sellers? Well, of course it's not. Um, the CME will even say that it has an algorithm. See, this is the part where they're not putting all the pieces together for you, but they give you breadcrumbs. Citadel on its website says we offer the market at prices that people want to trade at. And you brush that over and you say, oh, that's a marketing headline. No, they're actually telling you exactly what they're doing. Because you put your stop or your liquidation point uh, at a certain area of interest, okay, it's a stop to you. It's a loss to you, but, but it's showing you that's where you want to trade, right? Whenever you put a buy stop at a high price, that's where you want to trade, or you put a, a, a sell a sell stop at a low price, that's where you want to trade, right? That's where you're a willing participant. Or not you, but your order is a willing participant. And Citadel is telling you, well, we're offering you at that price. Lo and behold, that's what Citadel is doing. And so they're not lying to you. I mean, they're actually telling you the truth. That, that is what they're doing. And then on the CME website, you, you wonder, well, how do the gaps work? The CME will tell you they have, I think, papers on it that they have a basically a pricing algorithm that that will um, offer the new price after a period of no trading, like the weekend or a resettlement period. Basically, uh, they have an algorithm. They tell you that they that the CME has an algorithm um, that re that will reprice the bid and offer 
where where their algorithm thinks it needs to be after a resettlement period. But you were never smart enough or you were never taught to think like, well, wait, what if they don't turn that algorithm off? <laughs> what, if, what if it actually just keeps going and there are no buyers and there are no sellers? It's just a repricing algorithm. The same one that's applying over the weekend, the same one that is applying to... Uh, let, me, let me show you an example. So let's go to the December contract. Let's go to December. Okay. December, right? This is on our daily chart. December has large gaps because it's it's past the September contract and it's past the um, it's past the June contract. It is trading right now at a fifty point premium in comparison to the September contract. What is that? Well, that is your theta premium or your time premium, similar to an options contract. That's why the December contract is trading higher than the uh, September contract. So the further that you go out in time, the more premium, just like an insurance policy, is going to be priced into the market. So that's why December is trading 50 points higher than uh, 50 points. It's like 50 points. Something like It's 44. Yeah? 46? 46 points higher than 46 points higher premium than the September contract. Well, how do you think this is the, you know the December contract it has trading. It's well it's well in advance. It has trading you know all way 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 back, right? So let's see. December of this year traded all the way back. It had its first mark to market in June of 2021. Okay, and we see that's where our first mark to market on this product was. I think, what is that? It's like two and a half years? Something like that. It's a long time. So, yeah, one year. I think it's, two, it's one and a half years. Two and a half years. Anyways, guys, there are no real buyers and sellers on the December 2023 contract in June of 2021. Obviously, that's not what's really happening. It's a it's an algorithm. It's it's pricing in a premium discount based on the contract months, um, and the C, that's what the CME is doing. And it has an algorithm that will just do it. It just lifts the it lifts the bid and it puts down the offer in order to bring all the different contracts months into line. Very similar to an options concept. But what does that tell you? That there are no buyers and sellers. You know, the, the, the CME will outright tell you that, well, how do we reprice over the weekend? When there's a weekend gap, how did that happen? Well, the CME will tell you, yeah, we have an algorithm. Well, what if they just don't turn the algorithm off, folks? <laughs> what if they just don't turn the algorithm off? Duh. Duh. And if they didn't turn off the algorithm, what does that mean? That means that that same resettlement algorithm it might not be the exact same algorithm. I don't know. I'm, I'm not privy to this information. But I'm, I, I can see from the empirical evidence that that is what's happening. How do they keep the December contract that's trading two and a half years in advance and it has mark to markets years in advance? It has trades years in advance, even one. Even one trade is enough. It has a mark to market. Well, how are they doing that? Well, obviously, it's an algorithm, right? <laughs> obviously, it has to be. It's the only way that they could keep all these contracts. Uh, in line with one another in harmony of course of course now that you think about it you're like oh duh well anyways so there are no buyers and sellers yes okay let me explain when you enter in on a market order you you are buying something and there are buy orders and there are sell orders but they are not what is moving price what is moving price is a pricing engine in order to keep the market in line all of these contract months to keep them in line with one another okay and they're factoring in things like gamma and theta decay and the same principles that would apply to options or the same principles that are applied to these futures contracts because they're a time-based contract so we we see expansions in gamma on the on the chart we see contractions in gamma on the chart right same principles that would apply to options we see inefficiencies in the chart, just like we would see the same inefficiencies on in an options product. It's the same thing in a futures product because they're very similar products, very similar 
sort of time-based, data-based products. So there are no buyers and sellers, and you should stop thinking in those terms. There's only, um, they, they have no impact on what the price is going to do. You could put in a hundred billion, bazillion dollars, and okay, yeah, you might take out, you might take out a few, um, like let's put it this way. If you put in a hundred million dollars worth of, of S&P contracts or ES contracts in at one time, you're going to quickly reprice the the price down however many points or ticks that would be. But then the, the high frequency trading algorithms are going to kick in immediately. They're going to kick in immediately and they're going to, they're just going to lift the offer or they're that lift the bid or drive down the offer. So lift the bid or drive down the offer. They're just going to reprice the bid and offer like immediately because it's an algorithm. So your one order might have an impact on price for a second, for less than a second, a millisecond. But then the algorithm the algorithm is going to kick back in. And it's going to start repricing the bid and offer immediately, right? Immediately. So that's what's really happening. So there are no buyers. It's easier to think if you want to be closer to the actual algorithmic terms. There, there, um, there are no buyers and there are no sellers. There's just repricing. There's just premium discount, theta decay, gamma expansion, and gamma contraction. That's it. That's really all that's happening. So I'm going to go back to the September contract. It's going to be our new current contract. So there are uptrends and there are downtrends. Again, because the market is algorithmic, this is not really true. There are no uptrends and there are no downtrends in the classical sense because the market is not priced by humans. There are buy programs and there are sell programs, which are macros or they're scripts that are given to an algorithm to lift the bid or drive down the offer in order to, uh, in order to rebalance an imbalance, in order to re-deliver an inefficiency, so that first pass back down to an inefficiency, in order to expand gamma or in order to contract gamma. That's all that's happening. And so there's... In that way, the CME uh, is protecting itself because no foreign hostile actor could ever come in and, and actually affect the market. So it's not in their interest to ever explain that this is what's happening, but that this is obviously what's happening. So you could never have a foreign actor come in and sell a billion dollars worth of ES contracts and drive us down 5% in one day. Have you ever noticed, by the way, that that doesn't happen anymore? It's almost like after certain events happen, they put in an algorithm. <laughs> I know, shocking, right? And they don't tell you about it because uh, it's not your business to know. They don't want they don't want the public to know. Um, but uh, you know, the public is figuring it out. I guess. Um, anyways, I, I only have empirical evidence, right? I don't actually have documents in front of me. But I have an empirical evidence by watching the, the chart that this is what's happening. So in this way, the CME and the powers that be protect themselves from any sort of real um, danger. So we talked about theta decay. So I'm not going to get back into that. So fundamentals matter. The truth is, again... It may the fundamentals might matter for like an hour, or if it were a bomb drop somewhere, something that's truly unexpected. Anything that is expected, okay, anything like an economic release that's gonna we we know that that economic release is gonna come out. The market's already priced that in. The algorithm has already priced that in. So, the only time that the algorithm is not going to be the pricing engine is not going to be in effect, and, and it's very rare. It's usually just the pricing engine is just in effect. The only times that the human beings are actually going to control price is things like FOMC, maybe non-farm payrolls, but then again, I've seen non-farm payrolls seem to act in line with the algorithm anyways. Maybe CPI, but again, I don't think so. I think really it's only FOMC or like a terrorist attack, right? So that's really the only thing I think where human beings might actually control the market very temporarily. FOMC and a terrorist attack. Other than that, no, no. Anything that can be foreseen in time uh, will all the pricing engine is already going to factor that in. Or, it, it, or honestly, I think what's really happening is that if it's like an economic release, it's just a smokescreen. The pricing engine was already going to expand gamma somewhere, and 
the economic release just so happens to come out at a predictable time, which would make it nice and easy to put in an algorithm, right? If, if the economic releases all come out at the same time and you needed an algorithm that did certain tasks, well, wouldn't that be logical, like a, a, a sort of binary logic that an algorithm could use? Sure. So anyways. So, you know, my advice to you is don't think about buyers and sellers. Just pretend like they don't exist. There are no buyers and sellers. There are no uptrends. There are no downtrends. There's just buy programs, sell programs. There are no buyers and sellers. There's just the algorithm is, is re-delivering an inefficiency or it's rebalancing inefficiency or it's expanding gamma or it's contracting gamma, meaning expanding volatility or contracting volatility. Uh, that, that's it. That's it. That's all that's really happening. So anyways, um, I wanted to bring that up. And as long as you can start thinking in algorithmic terms, all right, then you can start to more accurately see what the market is doing. And is it a coincidence that price tends to go where there is an inefficiency, but it also happens to be where there would be a lot of resting liquidity? No, these things are not a coincidence. Not a coincidence at all. So, anyways, uh, that is moving away from your classic false human terms and moving into algorithmic vocabulary that should more um, accurately reflect what the market is doing and it should increase your strike rate in your trading. So remember, don't think in human terms, think in algorithmic terms. All right, I'll be back probably later. I might do another video today. Bye-bye.